This is season two, episode 10 of my modular journey. And today we're going to take a look at after later audio steps. It is a burst generator stepped random voltage. Uh, this was a, a nice little $129 module, pretty, pretty affordable. It came in on the January 18th batch of things along with Pubble. Steps is a burst generator with random or looping CV sequences and or stepped voltage generator with gate controls. Uh, why I chose it is uh, one, it was it was kind of small because uh, I'm, I was running out of room in the big rack. So it's only six HP. Uh, it is uh, only 129 bucks, so it's pretty cheap. And it is a, a source of random, which as everybody knows who watches these episodes, I am a big fan of everything random. And it has a lot of options in here. So going from top to bottom, I'll, ch I'll talk about the clock. It has a clock here, which goes from uh, 1.5 second pulses up to 100 millisecond pulses at the max. So this goes pretty fast. Uh, the next section here is an attenuator for the range of steps. In the middle, of course, it's zero. There's no range, it won't do anything. Uh, down the side here, we have a, a, a toggle switch for, for loop and burst. So in loop mode, whenever you trigger, it will just keep looping that same set of eight over and over again. When it's in burst, it'll play the eight pulses in a burst and then stop unless you have an end of burst to trigger it to, it to do it again, and then it'll just keep going. Uh, on the other side, there's a random, meaning it'll do eight random every time it triggers. It'll randomize a new set of eight, or it'll capture the same eight steps and play them over and over, kind of like a, a trapped melody. Uh, similar to, I think, what a Turing machine does when you get that, that magic and you lock it in place. So I think it's the same kind of pr principle there. Uh, and of course, I already covered kind of the trigger button. Uh, for the sequence section, it has a clock in, so you can use this clock or set the clock here. Uh, it also, this is the steps output, so whatever you have it set to, the random or eight steps will then be, will come out of here. This is the pitches that come out of here. Or voltage, let's, call, let's just call it voltage because maybe it doesn't have to be pitches, right? Uh, over here is a random gate, and this random gate will put, will randomly generate a gate high or low uh, during these eight pulses, meaning it's not always going to do a gate high per pulse. It might do one every one, three, and five. That actually is kind of cool in a way because, again, it, you know, see random. It has a, another unpredictability about it, so I kind of like that. Uh, down here in the burst section, we have a trigger input. So, again, if you're, you're either pushing the button manually or you're sending a, a trigger in here to trigger the eight steps to be randomly generated uh, or run the burst cycle or start the loop here. Uh, it has a clock, so you can also clock this separately from this, uh, and then it outputs a clock. So whatever clock is set either here or here, you can then output it to you know, chain it to go to another module, which a lot, I see a lot of people have multiple steps modules, you know, one or two, three, three step modules. Uh, the bottom row is an, let's see if you can see that, an end of burst, meaning when the eight steps is done running, it sends a pulse. When, uh, when the eight steps starts and a gate opens, when the eight steps close, stop, the gate closes, and then here is a pulse for every, every one of the eight steps. So with that, let's get it plugged in and, and put into the rack. Oh, I didn't even realize the rack was on. Good thing I looked. Let's get this plugged in and make some noise. All right, steps is in the rack. Let's power it up. How I will use steps in my rack will be for uh, for added randomness. And if the sequencer stuff works as well as it as I think it will, uh, that could also be a plus. You know, finding that eight pulse pattern and just having it play on a loop sounds pretty interesting. Plus, additional random generative CV is always fun. So for the demo, it's going to be pretty simple because it really does what it does. I mean, there's a there's not there's not a whole lot more to it than than the sequence section and the burst section. So let's start with the sequence section, shall we? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, the sequence out. Oh, by the way, I have it in loop and random right now. That's so you, that's why you see the the generator running at the clock speed I have set. So if I plug this into my CV of the quad VCO, and then turn up the volume. So not much is going on because it's pretty much set right in the center, which is again, zero. 
so there's no range. But if I lower it, let me turn down the reverb a little bit. So right now, as you can tell, this is all four VCOs running. Let's spread them out a little bit on the... So that's... <laughs> so this is the eight steps on, on burst or on loop mode. So now with it in in burst mode, it's it, there's no gating right now going on. It's just wide open. So now I'm going to push the trigger button. It just generated eight more random notes. Let me flip it up a little higher. Let me put it on a loop. See, you might you might find something interesting about that particular pattern so you would lock it in by putting it in eight steps and leave it in loop and it'll just do this over and over I'm going to take a, I'm gonna build an envelope real quick I'm gonna take envelope from ornament and crime over here and I'm gonna do these two channels that I have in my VCA I'll turn these down so let, me let me take the random gate out of the sequence and plug it into uh, ornament and crime here so now this is generating cvs here and it's triggering randomly gates you can see over here when they're triggering Uh, I was having a little trouble a moment ago. I had to unset a few things and understand what's going on. And apparently the thing that's happening is this random gate that is trying to, I mean, there's only eight steps that it's running and this random gate is only doing like two or, two or three gates per burst. So you're not really hearing all the other notes that are being generated by this. So let me, let me start this again. And you hear it, right? It's, this this random is what's starting the envelope, which opens the gate. Otherwise, you're not hearing anything. But if I turn up the initial gain, you can hear all the other voltages that are being generated. And you hear when it gets loud, that's when it's triggering the CV. So... I am not a, this is why I say I'm not really a fan of this random gate. It could probably come in handy for something else other than audio signals, perhaps. So instead, why don't we try using uh, the pulses. So now there's a pulse being generated for every single note. Now I can turn down the initial gain again and hear the sound. And then let me go fix my envelopes. All right, so now what we have is we have, now it's back to kind of normal where we're in a loop mode, we're doing random voltages with almost no separation because we're at the, we're at 12 o'clock and it's sending the CV signals out here to the oscillator and then it's sending the pulses one per note of the eight steps out to the envelope generator. Now we're finally in a place where we're starting to get somewhere. So I'm gonna move this now up and down to hear the ranges change. It's got a pretty wide range. So this is what I was saying earlier about when it's at noon and I turn it up to, let's say it goes up to two o'clock. 
And now let's go to 10 o'clock. It doesn't sound a whole lot different, so I'm not, I'm not clear what the negative side of this is doing. I guess I could run through the scope and see. Let's do that. What do you say we do that? All right, so here is our random steps being generated on the negative side, 10 o'clock. Let's flip it over to two o'clock and see what the difference is. I don't see a difference. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but let's move on. So again, this is in random mode and this is a loop. So it's gonna constantly generate randoms and whatever. So I'm gonna put it into eight step mode. So now what it's gonna do is let's say I found a pattern that I like. Now it's gonna repeat that, those eight notes over and over again. So if I put it in burst mode and hit it. Let's put it back in random. So now it's those eight notes. So, so I think the way it works is you put it down in burst mode so it runs just one cycle, come up here to random and hit it, find something you like, and then drop it into eight, flip on the loop and go. So that's kind of cool. So another way to, to trigger it, and rather than putting it in a loop, I learned is to take the end of burst down here. So at the end of those eight, it's going to send out a pulse and you could patch this right back into trigger. And now I will hit trigger and it, will, it should just run endlessly even if it's in burst. So that was kind of neat to find out too. So again, now this trigger could be from any other source in the rack, including something timed or a sequencer that says, you know, every, every eight bars trigger this guy to, to run this pattern. So that's kind of how I would probably use it as well. So the thing that wasn't working earlier for me was using, uh, using the random gate here. But let me plug that back in for the second envelope. So since they're all playing the same eight notes, you can't really hear the difference. I guess I could probably, let me put these really low and put these really high. Maybe we'll try that. So now you hear a kind of like a bass line doing something different. How about we switch these to sawtooth so they're a little bit more obnoxious. back in, in triangle. So now you hear your, your bass tones are a little bit more obnoxious. So now you can, now you can kind of see where using pulses here and, and random sequenced here might come in handy. And so the last thing to look at would probably be this gate down here. I'm just gonna actually plug that into data this time because I, it, it's, I'm not gonna demo that. It's just, it's a little too weird. So here you'll just see it just opens because it's running. And if you stop it, the gate closes. That's the blue trace here. So if you start it, it opens and then closes. So it's pretty much that simple. Uh, you can, you can, again, if this is randomly being triggered from outside, you can, you can have this open the C, the, the VCA just for that pattern to play and then close it down again. So that's kind of neat. I think that's kind of it for this module. It is very, very basic and very small, but it has a lot of, a lot of really interesting potential here for, for generating uh, little eight, eight step patterns. I actually almost forgot about uh, one of the things I wanted to show off and that was, uh, that was the clocks. So I'm going to use Pamela's new workout to just put out uh, a couple of clock signals and then I'm going to feed these clocks into these clock jacks here. 
So let's start with uh, let's start with the the one the clock for the burst generator down here, and then a clock for the sequencing generator here. And I'm going to self patch this again so it just keeps going. I guess I don't have to do that. I could just put it up in loop. But let's start the clock. And then and then we are going to start the, the random by triggering the loop. So now what's going on is Pamela's way over here is generating the, the two clocks. And then it's it's sending this clock signal into this. So I don't think this becomes a, a divider or a multiplier because I'm not seeing it change anything here. So now we have two different two different clocks for uh, sequence and then for burst. So over here on Pamela's, I'm gonna go to channel seven where I have this thing and I'm gonna speed it up a little. So you can see the burst generator is now going faster, whereas the the clock for the sequencing is still going the same speed. So it this this section here is still going the same speed. Not anything, nothing's going faster there. Putting that back to there. Now I'm going to go back to five. I'll speed this one up. <laughs> that could be interesting. So anyway, the point of that was to show you can do two different speeds for the two different things that this thing does. And that alone is also pretty cool. So, so that's it for episode 10 of season two of my modular journey featuring the uh, After Later Audio Steps module. Uh, coming up next is a nice and simple uh, ALM Busy Circuits uh, attenuverter. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>